Ahead of his induction to the John Smith Grand National Hall of Fame, Richard Pittman reflected on 45 years' involvement with the world's greatest steeplechase as jockey and broadcaster. I feel very humble. <laughs> You know, some great names, some great horses. But I did look up in the dictionary, the Oxford Dictionary, uh, what is a legend. (laughs) And it said myth. You know, well, okay, I'll have a myth. Um, No, I'm so pleased. Uh, I I interviewed my ex-wife, who was inducted some time ago, for the BBC when we were still doing it. And just as we were going live, she leant across and trod on my foot and said... Don't mess with me and I won't mess with you. So nothing changes, you know. <laughs> look, there's a good jockey. Now, there's a man who could ride. Look, Peter Skidmore. Eight times champion. Don't have to introduce my... Were you, were you, eight, were you eight, 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 champ- eight times champion? So, uh, he, looked like a, he looked like a greyhound trying to make love to a rabbit in a finish, but he's improved since then. Um, sorry for that interruption. Where were we? Well, you, you, you've worked at oh, for the BBC. for so many years and yeah. I've seen so many highs and lows. What, what, what are your greatest memories well, of the last four years? I've worked with Skew for some time on the BBC. Um, <laughs> strangely, I mean, obviously, the Bob Champion on Tanita was incredible because if he hadn't have won, it's still a fairy tale because... 54-year-old John Thorne rode his own horse, who he bred, he had the stallion and the mare, and rode Spartan Missile to be second. So if Champ hadn't turned up, it's still a fairy tale. But then we've had those highs and lows, the bomb scare. Where, I mean, as a television person, that was amazing. And also the year it was void, because I did my thing, the preamble and build-up, and then was sitting back in my chair, sort of relaxing, and all of a sudden there was mayhem. And the producer's saying in my ear, Pittman, get off your backside and get out there and find out what can happen. So I rushed out, wet area that we had planks and scaffolding, and I fell over. And I was a fat little man, winded. But we have floor managers, you see. So they've been told to get me to the start. He picked me up by the scruff of the neck and carried me through the crowd. And I'm going... <laughs> You know, you can't breathe, you can't talk. Anyway, he got me to the start, and I found Keith Brown, the starter, surrounded by people. And I went in with my microphone, you know, didn't ask him for permission, shoved it at him and said, Right, Keith, what can happen? And he said, Only nine horses can go if they go again. Anything that fell or completed one so it cannot race again. To which a fist came through the camera shot at the starter and said, I'll see you in court. It was John Upsom who trained the favourite at the time. It was quite amazing. But then, you see, the producers are never happy. He shouted in my ear, find the stewards. Find out what you know what's what's going on, because we were linked into Hong Kong, and we were the tenth race of the day, and they could not bet on their next race in Hong Kong until ours had been decided. So I went. The stewards were up at four ladders, scaffolding way up high in a porter cabin, and a guard at the bottom, you know, sword, feathery hat. And he stopped me, cameraman, clown man, me, stopped me and he said, you can't go up there, it's the stewards. I said, yes, I know, they've just invited me up to give the news, which they hadn't, but you have to brave it out. So I went up four ladders, and right up high, knocked on the door, you see, and out came the steward secretary, Hibbert Foy, who said very grandly, yes? I said, look, the world is waiting for your decision. You'll know when the public at Aintree know. There were 60,000, we had 600 million. You know, it was pathetic. Things have changed since then, and it's got better. But that was such an exciting time. And then for the Monday, when it was eventually held, for John Major and Princess Royal to come, and the gates opened for nothing for the people of Liverpool, would have been fantastic to all of us. It was just, I thought, Britain being great.